Okay, so we're going to start by removing the right front wheel, uh, right front wheel, and it's a 21 millimeter socket, which will which you'll need to remove the wheel. Um, you can do that right after jacking the car up and putting it on jack stands. So next, you're going to want to remove the splash shield here, which is held in by two two screws. There's one there, one there. And you're going to need a 10 millimeter socket for that. So the third screw, that's on looking at the f looking forwards. So the other two are up here, but there's another one over there. You may also want to remove this under engine shield, which sits just under the oil pan. If that'll, if you think that'll help you maneuver things. So there's three 10 millimeter head screws holding that in. The oil pan with jack, floor jack, and I'm using a hockey puck in between. So, so jack it up just a little bit, just so so that when you remove this engine mount bracket and separate the engine from the mount, that the engine won't drop too much. And so to remove the, this engine mount bracket. You're going to need a 17 millimeter socket to remove these three nuts and then this uh, screw. They're all 17 millimeter heads. And then you can remove this ground cable if you want to. You'll need a 10 millimeter socket for that. Now you're going to need a 14 millimeter socket for this screw right here to remove the stay plate off. So let's do that. And next we're going to crack uh, these. Uh, screws with a 10 millimeter wrench. So this is the this is the water pump pulley right here. We're just gonna crack them loose and that's it. So to remove the belt that runs the water pump and the alternator, you need to loosen this lock nut here, the one with the red stripe. And then there's one also on the lower part. You can just see it there on the lower part of the alternator. You need to crack that loose. And then you can loosen this bolt here which is the one that adjusts the tension on this belt. So you're going to need a 12 millimeter socket to loosen these. Okay, so to remove the <clears throat> AC compressor belt, you're going to have to go in here. So this is the tensioner pulley for the AC compressor belt. So you want to loosen the nut in the center of the pulley, and then, which is a, you're going to need a 14 millimeter socket for that. And then there's this is the tensioner screw over here, which is you'll need a 12 millimeter socket to crack this one loose and then loosen this one until you have enough slack in the belt to remove it. Now we can also remove the the screws that hold on the water pump pulley to the water pump now that the belt is off. So now I use a socket, 10 millimeter socket to remove these four screws for the upper timing cover. Okay, now get your contraption together, put, put a whole bunch of extensions together, get a 22 millimeter socket so you can rotate the crankshaft clockwise. So what you're trying to do is line up those notch marks on the crankshaft pulley with the ones that says IT with those lines. And you also want to make sure out of here on the camshaft timing pulley it says up while it's up <laughs> and not down because the camshaft pulley spins at half the speed that the crankshaft does so you can the other combination is to have those notches line up and the up uh, word upside down so you want to make sure it's right side up that means you're at uh, top dead center for cylinder number one and ready to take the timing belt off so once you're lined up, you can take a 22 millimeter socket and an impact wrench or impact gun and uh, zip that sucker off. So now that we have the crankshaft pulley off and the little thing behind it, we can take off the lower timing belt cover. So there's two screws at the bottom here. Again, you're going to need a 10 millimeter socket and there's going to be another three Closer to the top, you can see one right here, one's below there, and then one more on this side. Okay, so now you're going to take a 12 millimeter wrench, crack that nut loose here, 
and then you're going to use a 6 millimeter hex bit, stick it in there, and then rotate it so the pulley tensioner pulley moves away from the belt. And when it's away from the belt, you just want to retighten this um, screw again and then gently slip the belt off. So I've removed I've removed the tensioner pulley which used to sit right there. And I will also be replacing the idler pulley which you can see there. It's actually easier to see from underneath. There he is right there. So that's uh, you'll need a 14 millimeter socket to get him loose. Okay, so to drain the coolant in the radiator, if your car is cold, you can just unscrew the radiator cap and then put a bucket underneath here. You'll be able to tell there's this valve down here, which is like a wing nut kind of. You just gotta screw that counterclockwise. So you see a flow of coolant. And there it is. And just keep that open until it all drains out. Okay, so the next step is to remove the water pump. But before we do that, we gotta remove um, this brace here that the alternator mounts to because that's that's in the way of removing the water pump. So we gotta remove these two screws. There are 12 millimeter sockets. And then this one, which we've loosened from before, we gotta take it out. It's also a 12 millimeter uh, head. And then this one over here, which is a 14 millimeter head. And then we can take this bracket off and then unbolt the water pump from the block. So now to take the water pump out, there are five screws in total that were holding it in, two of which were already taken out because they were um, the alternator bracket was fastened with those two so there's only three left. Okay so the new water pump is in. This should go without saying but you make sure to use a new gasket as well. And then the first initial three screws that bolt the water pump to the block should be torqued to ten and a half foot pounds and then when you put when you put the tensioner bracket to the alternator back then you torque these two remaining screws to uh, 19 and a half foot pounds. So now it's time to put the idler pulley back in. I'm putting a new one in. It's a 14 millimeter socket and we're torquing it down to 39 foot pounds right there. Okay, I'm just going to show you this on the old tensioner since it's impossible to see on the one that I mounted on the engine. but. We're gonna have a like a grenade pin on it that's gonna have these locked into the position in between this gap right here where my middle finger is. So what you want to do is when you have the bolt threaded in, you're gonna put a six millimeter Allen key, and rotate this part counterclockwise until this lever here is in the middle of this gap. And once it is, then you tighten down the bolt in the middle. And then you're supposed to do two crankshaft revolutions, bring it back to top dead center, and make sure that this thing is still in the middle of this gap here. All right, so now we can put the lower tying belt cover on, which I already did. They're all, uh, you just need a 10 millimeter socket for those. Uh, the torque spec is about seven foot pounds. And then after that, we can put the, the crankshaft sprocket as well as the pulley on and the torque spec for the big 22 millimeter hex head screw is 120 foot pounds. So the next step is to install the upper tying cover with the four screws. 10 millimeter socket and the torque spec is 7 foot pounds. So the next step is to install the water pump pulley and then just kind of start the bolts. You can't, you won't be able to tighten them down until the the belt is on. 
So once you've got your uh, air compressor belt back on, then you can install the water pump and alternator belt as well. And then once you've done that, you can snug up these uh, screws for the water pump plate. So now we got to put the state plate as well as this uh, motor mount bracket on. So the torque specs are as follows: 40 foot-pounds for this guy and 68 for these four, the three nuts and this one. And these are all 17 millimeter um, hex sockets and these, this is a 14 mil. And then make sure to put this ground cable back on to here. And then just uh, put back the splash guard underneath. And Fill it up with coolant, bleed a cooling system, and then you're pretty much done.